Hi, it's Eliana Gilad here, um, recording on Friday, January 9th. And the subject that I would like to speak about today is change. How can we open the space to go through change in a comfortable way, especially when we're facing lots of both inner and outer turmoil. How do we move through change and meet turmoil in a way that's more comfortable for us? And I found a um, a piece of writing that I wrote a few years back that is really inspiring me this week and providing me with inspiration and upliftment. And I wanted to share it with you. It's a piece that I wrote towards my 50th birthday. Today I'm 51 years old. So this is about a year and a half ago that uh, I wrote it. As my 50th birthday draws closer and closer, I find myself turning inward more and more in a process of inner housekeeping. Where am I in my life? How am I living out those directions which I chose for myself? Where am I still treading water? And where do I want to move forward and complete those projects which still provide me with juice? A friend asked me this morning whether I'd be honest enough with myself if I didn't feel like living where I live anymore. Would I be honest enough with myself to get up and leave? Oh my God. His question took me for a loop. I immediately became unbalanced inside, as if one of the legs on my chair had suddenly been knocked off its axle. Of course I would, I replied defensively. Would I really? His question comes exactly at a time when I'm questioning my inner decisions that I made about myself long, 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 long ago. In learning to love myself, I've opened to meet up with the myriad unloving sides of myself. The situation in the Middle East is such an apt metaphor for my own inner landscape of both me and myself. Clear opinions of me by me, conflict with murky judgments of other lost and disenfranchised parts of my personality. The comfortable parts of me live alongside me in relative comfort and peace. The competitive, jealous, and insecure parts of me live in seclusion, cut off from my mainstream personality. They have been living quite anonymously each side compartmentalized in a tent of a refugee camp. And when I don't give them attention or love, they begin to throw bombs into my tightly protected, quote-unquote, peaceful life. Unannounced bombs create terror inside of my psyche. I don't even know when I'll be hit. So better toe the line and stay in line with this providing me with a false sense of security. So, in order to forge a real and sustainable peace with myself, I've taken to daily practice of a particular closed eye meditation, just listening to my core. And as I stop and listen, the noise floats to the surface. It isn't even that it floats to the surface. It's more that I notice... You know, that naughty voice of refusal that's somehow always at the pit of my stomach, stopping too much from getting in. It's a very, very protective shield. Then my jealousy and competitiveness come up. They won't like me. No, they don't like me, and I'm convinced of it. But do I know this for sure? Who doesn't like me? Maybe it's me who doesn't like me. What about turning that around? Well, it's painful to admit how much I've hated myself, albeit unconsciously. And all the myriad of voices that can come up 
go grab something to eat, smoke a cigarette. Oh, I'll just watch some TV or go to the computer. No, the kids need me. And of course, I've got to do X, Y, Z to be a better person. All these are outer focused activity. Anything, anything, anything to avoid meeting the true self. Could I be honest enough with myself? Would I be honest enough with myself? I don't know. I think that the fear of the unknown keeps us from moving forward with our dreams. It's that fear that maybe I'll have to leave it all or make tremendous changes that I don't even know if I can handle. I really, I don't even know if I can handle, of course, because I don't know what I can handle, of course, because I've not given myself the benefit of the doubt, nor the conditions, nor the support to find out. So, how do you, I listen to myself, and I'll ask you, how do you listen to yourself? And then, what do I do with what I hear? What do you do with what you hear? And, How do I compete? Actually, more correctly, how do I not compete? How do I quiet the competing voices and noise of what I hear? And how do you quiet your own competing voices and the noise of what you hear? From my heart, I sincerely ask those questions, both of myself and both of you, It's time that we listen to ourselves more in earnest, more honestly, more authentically. And if we dare listen to the answers, then perhaps we can dare live and follow direction from what our deepest inner murmurings are whispering to us. It's time, and there is no better time than now. And I wish you all a very, very good week and a more comfortable time with your own meeting of inner change.